All week long, I've been getting messages on social media. Why, AJ? Why did you take out the WCW legends? Why did you ruin one night Nitro? Well, here's the answer. At first, I was slightly offended I wasn't considered for the show. After all, like I said, I was an actual wrestler there. Unlike the super fan wannabe putting it all together, who never stepped foot in a WCW ring. More on him in a second. But then the more I thought about it, I didn't want to be a part of bringing back and honoring the egotistical, greedy dinosaurs who slept walked through their matches just to collect a fat paycheck, putting the company out of business, and nearly killing my career before it ever got started. In fact, it was so bad down there, when they first offered me a contract, I turned it down and took a job delivering water because it paid more. Because all these so-called legends were flying around in private jets with their guaranteed contracts, wrestling four times a year, and there was no money left to pay guys who actually wanted to be there. Ultimately, I ended up going to WCW for three months, and it was way worse than I thought it would be. Every decision from the top guys was made to hold back the younger, more talented wrestlers like me. Finally, it all caught up to them and the company folded. I had to go back to the indies and work my butt off to make it to where I am today. But I'm the exception. Most of the younger WCW guys from that era, like my old tag team partner, they never made it. So that's how I remember WCW. Not as this company that beat WWE for a short time or part of this over-glorified golden era of wrestling, but a sinking ship that almost took down AJ Styles with it. So that's why I did what I did. I shut down the embarrassing tribute show before it ever happened, and I'd do it again 500 times. So let's circle back to the guy who started all this. You were just a fan when all that with WCW went down. You had no idea what really happened. But in my eyes, that almost makes you worse than the so-called legends you put on a pedestal. You're supposedly a WWE superstar now, so act like it. This isn't your time to play fantasy WCW. It's embarrassing. So you want to talk about destroying me for what I did? Remember, WCW already tried that, and they failed. So I'm going to do a favor for every man and woman in that locker room who has any actual respect for what we do and destroy you. <laughs> Challenge accepted. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Weighing in at 275 pounds, the tag. A key component to his transition from MMA to WWE was cardiovascular conditioning. MMA fights have rounds and most bouts end quickly. Once the bell rings in WWE, the combatants battle until the end of the match, so it's a higher level of conditioning. Let's see how he handles it tonight. You are looking at a one-of-a-kind superstar. Former Intercontinental Champion, United States Champion, WWE Champion. Plenty of hardware to back up his success. And his opponent from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds. The Phenomenal AJ Styles. Always 
always on the hunt for glory. One of the most exciting and enduring competitors. AJ Styles constantly upping his game. Yeah, a superstar who works incredibly hard to be the absolute best in the game. The man who attempted to bring you one night Nitro gets his chance for revenge against AJ Styles, who crashed his party last week. What a disgraceful display from the phenomenal one. But that's what we've come to expect from AJ Styles. See, I think AJ Styles must have learned something from his old job delivering H2O because he poured a bucket of cold water on the WCW reunion show and every legend who thinks they can waltz back into the ring whenever they want. There's repercussions for that, like this match tonight. Great response to AJ there. Yeah. Rolling elbow finds its mark. Ouch. Steady drop kick. Great ups. And just like that, he said crashing to the floor. Out of the Whoa. ring. What's his plan here? for something beneath the ring. Four. He's rummaging for some sort of equalizer underneath the ring. Shifts it back onto him. Four. Okay, he's re-entering the ring. Six. Yeah. With the Larian, AJ Styles looking a little out of his element. Styles is getting dominated. AJ's got to slow this momentum down. Hooked up. Ah, oh, shit breaker. Ooh, well measured. Oh, he gets what he deserves for all that gloating. Is he attempting a Styles Clash? It's Finn Balor. What's he doing here? It seems Balor's attempting to help out his former club partner. He's certainly got everyone's attention. AJ Styles has a, a chair, and the referee has no idea. Neither does his opponent. It's Kevin Nash. We haven't seen Nash since Styles took out the WCW Legends a few weeks back. This is his chance for payback. is happening. And now AJ taking advantage. He's going to do it. He hits this and it's done. Styles clash. One, two, three. And it's all over thanks to the interference from Finn Balor and the shocking actions of Kevin Nash. This is unbelievable. What exactly is the relationship between these three? I'm not sure if Balor and Styles even know. There's your answer. It looks like we've just witnessed the birth of some kind of new NWO slash club type alliance. This is bad news for WWE. Oh, I agree. Nothing good can come from this.